Thank you for the introduction. Uh, yes, I know the title of my speech is a bit uh, long and complicated, um, but also in due that we're a bit behind on time, I'll try to like keep it short. And I, <laughs> and I uh, would like to focus on the case study, which I actually used in my thesis. The thesis itself is about more of the framework, but uh, I think with the case study, you can see more about what uh, I was trying to get at. So I will focus on the kick uh, Kickstart initiative that is uh, active in Sub-Saharan Af Africa. So first, uh, I would like to look a little bit at Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, you can see it here on the map. It's a massive area. <laughs> and uh, now we, I would like to sh talk a little bit about the situation in Sub-Saharan Africa. So um, in Sub-Saharan Africa, there has been an economic growth rate of about 4.7% in 2021, which is actually quite significant, especially seeing as to that many developing countries are uh, stagnating, especially since the pandemic. Um, but however, there has been no significant reduction in poverty in this area, even though there is growth. Now, you may be wondering what is, what is happening here. Um, it's actually also due to uh, the wealthy that are making all of the money uh, using methods to avoid taxes a lot, and uh, it's kind of having detrimental effects on the country. And this, of course, has the effect that uh, inequality is increasing because uh, the country is, has ex um, economic growth, but uh, the poor are seeing none of this. And uh, this growing inequality is, of course, something that is happening all over the world and uh, is talked about too rarely, I believe. Now, in Sub-Saharan Africa, there's the unique situation that 80% of the poor people are small-scale subsistence farmers. This means they have a small plot of land and they farm it, and uh, they make just enough to sustain themselves and maybe like a little bit of the community around. Uh, now, the big problem here that was identified by the founders of Kickstart is that uh, all of these farmers are dependent on rain. So this means that uh, food is not readily available around the year, which is a problem for the entire area. And uh, everyone sells at the same time. Basically, that this means that uh, farmers can only sell at minimal prices. And uh, the food, the market is all of a sudden flooded by food during the rainy season. And then during the dry season, there's nothing. And this is where Kickstart comes in. Uh, they identified this problem and uh, decided to uh, do something against it. Now. What is Kickstart? Kickstart is a non-profit social enterprise, um, which means it is a corporation, but it does not operate on profit, uh, kind of similar to the ICD as well. Um, it designs and mass markets very low cost. Uh, they call it money-making machines, uh, which is very descriptive of what their aim is. Um, now, this is how Kickstart operates. The, they, as a company themselves, they actually have the aim of uh, continually discovering uh, new business concepts, which thousands of people could start with a very small investment. And um, the project that they uh, implemented first is just one example. They're actually trying to continue to uh, create such um, products. And. Uh, the design and the production of the, the tools needed to create such businesses is then the business model that Kickstart uses. So now let's take a look at uh, the target group of uh, Kickstart uh, to better understand what they were trying to do. The target group is uh, rural subsistence farmers, which are the majority of poor people in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, and these people have two basic assets. They have one small plot of land and the basic farming skills. And uh, they said, this is enough. We like to do something. So a further context that is required is uh, they actually function in the cash economy. That means uh, they need money for everything that they do. Uh, they need money for food. They need money for education um, and basically everything. Um, now, these products that Kickstart offers are sold at very affordable prices to local farmers. And this is made possible due to the fact that they don't have profit as their interest, but uh, the well-being of the people. 
So their aim is actually to enable these farmers um, who use very basic techniques to move from subsistence farming to commercial farming. And the best way to do this is by uh, enabling them to use irrigation. So this is their product. They call it the money maker to illustrate uh, exactly very explicitly what this product is supposed to do and to make it unmistakable for uh, the target group that they are trying to reach, which is rural farmers. So this um, product, as you can see here, is uh, a water pump that is very easily to operate. Um, as you can see here, a woman is using it with her foot. And it actually provides access to readily available water sources, which uh, was previously not done in these areas. So this basically enables these farmers uh, not to have to rely on rain, but to use small ponds or streams and use them to irrigate water towards their fields. And uh, exactly, they do this through water pumps. Uh, these pumps, however, they have very high quality. Uh, they are very durable and they are long lived. Uh, and spare parts are readily available. Now, you may be thinking uh, normal business would never do this because uh, it's so unprofitable if you buy one pump and it lasts forever. But uh, remember, they're not trying to make money with this. <laughs> they're actually trying to help people. <laughs> so additionally, in order for farmers to be able to use this, they implemented farmer-friendly financing model models. And this kind of goes along the lines of microfinancing, which you may have heard about. Uh, and the effect is basically that these communities are independent from rain. And this uh, then had catalytic effects on the entire society. So basically, farmers can sell their products when food is scarce and when the prices are high. So anyone with a pump automatically has an enormous uh, benefit. And uh, this whole approach, it actually combats hunger and poverty at the same time in a very elegant solution. And uh, I think since we're here at the ICD and uh, cultural diplomacy is uh, what we're doing, um, I think the way they marketed the product is also fantastic. So I implemented a small clip. I hope it plays. <laughs> I don't know. It should be. Are you going to sing fast? I can try, but I don't think you would enjoy that. <laughs> Maybe. I'm not going to play the whole video, but they basically got a popular uh, singer in the region and uh, made him make a song and a music video about their product. <laughs> and I, I recommend you check it out because it's actually a great song. <laughs> But it basically explains within the music video uh, exactly what the uh, product does. And uh, I mean, it's a music video, so it's fun to watch. And of course, this is, I think, the best way to reach the audience. If you want to watch it, I can send you it later. <laughs> so now you may be wondering, OK, this is all nice and great. But uh, what actually happened? What did this do? And you might be surprised. Uh, they have actually managed to sell over 350,000 pumps in sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, each pump has um, increased uh, the buying household's income by 400%. And additionally, the most significant effect may have been that they enabled the foundation of 270,000 small businesses in Sub-Saharan Africa that are based on farming and selling produce. And with each business that was founded, lifting about five uh, people in the community out of poverty, they have roughly uh, um, lifted about 1.3 million people out of poverty. Additionally, they have been able to provide around 13 million people with food, since each small business is able to produce food for um, about 50 people. And uh, another important thing is that 93% uh, of the women who are using pumps feel empowered. And uh, this point of feeling empowered is actually the most valuable contribution that uh, Kickstart does with the products. Um, 
Additionally, it has significantly increased the climate resilience of these communities in these critical areas, which is also very important nowadays. And of course, they have, through their products, uh, created catalytic innovation, which you may have remembered from the title, but uh, this is actually what this is all about. Catalytic innovation is not just innovation as in creating a new product, but catalytic in innovation is about creating a product that then creates change within a community and within society. And by empowering these people, they have made substantial effects. They have external partners such as the Skoll Foundation, the Bar Foundation, and all of these very big international um, funds, as well as John Deere, which may be surprising, but they actually have a vested interest in this because they see the um, customers of these pumps being future customers of their farming machines. So it's, this is kind of the long-term effect that this can have. So you may be wondering, why is this so effective? And it's not a miracle. I think it's a very if, uh, new and promising way of doing development. Uh, they act locally. They minimize foreign interference, which is a major problem in development. They enable access to external um, actors, which is also important because that is where aid and uh, support comes from. And with this, they have access to international organizations. They have access to funding. And they are also just significantly more effective than conventional foreign aid, which uh, often has the effect that uh, countries or recipients just feel more dependent. And of course, in the end, they empower communities, which is the most significant effect. And create catalytic innovation. And um, basically, and another important thing to mention here is this is actually a private sector initiative. Um, so it's not the public sector. And this makes a difference because um, the small difference, though, is that they are not a private, um, economically driven um, initiative, but uh, driven by social in, uh, incentives. So in the bigger picture, um, they actually function in the social economy, uh, which emphasizes value creation instead of value capture in comparison to the classical economy. They are not profit-driven, non-profit. Uh, their aim is uh, a social cause and social um, uh, betterment. Uh, they provide basic needs such as education and human rights. And uh, one form of uh, initiatives within the social economy is social entrepreneurship. And social entrepreneurship actually applies entrepreneurial uh, initiatives and practices to solving social issues, um, which I believe is very important for uh, all the issues that we see today. And uh, this, of course, also entails that they actually create um, products or services um, that enable this. So what makes this work so well um, and the concept that could work on a broader scale is uh, a collaboration between social enterprises and grassroots initiatives. In this constellation, the grassroots initiatives, which in this case are the subsistence farmers um, that then become businesses that uh, can sell their products, um, actually have the effect that they act locally um, they are local farmers, not any developed nation interfering. Uh, they empower communities to develop themselves. It is truly bottom-up development um, and not uh, top-down development, which is a problem nowadays. Um, and on the other hand, the social enterprise. And this social enterprise uh, enables the coordination of a network of external partners, which is important to actually uh, bring change and have influence. Um, they enable funding, and they provide access to the scientific community, for example, and many other external actors that are interested in these kind of initiatives. Um, so in this sense, uh, it's a very unique approach that is able to act locally, but still involve uh, highly important external um, partners. And of course, the social enterprise also creates legitimacy. 
because uh, they function on business principles and are taken seriously by organizations. So in conclusion, um, I would like to say that uh, Kickstart ut actually utilizes a transferable approach to development. So this is just one example of how this approach can be used and a very effective example. But uh, for example, um, Yunus, who created uh, microfinance, he was arguably one of the first to uh, implement such an approach. And there are many other examples, um, like in India as well. So it is widely applicable and it is uh, adapted to local circumstances. Uh, it is truly bottom up. It is inclusive of communities and uh, it is compatible with external actors. And ultimately, this um, enables the empowerment of communities, which is most important for development, to have people feel like they can do something about what's happening to them and uh, not have the feeling that they should rely on some external um, parties that are not even aware of the exact situation they are in. So that's a brief glimpse of uh, <laughs> what I, I would, was doing in my thesis. If I would have had more time, I would have liked to uh, done a bit more of <laughs> an excursion. Um, but this is it for now. Thank you.